All right, folks, welcome to Lid Tips. In this series, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss topics that are of interest to amateur radio or ham operators. In this particular episode, we are going to talk about my buddy Stan and uh, his new ham shack. Um, it's a pretty good story. It's a tale of woe and a lesson is learned in the end. So if uh, you want to watch something like that, why don't you do yourself a favor, go grab yourself a nice cold one, come on back and we'll get started. Oh, and if you like this video, go ahead and leave a comment or subscribe or click the bell icon. Thanks, everybody. All right, so let's talk a little bit about who is Stan. Uh, Stan is a new ham, and like many of us, he's excited to get into the hobby and he wants to get himself some gear. Uh, what happens to Stan in this story can and does happen to many of us. Um, Stan owns a Balfang and a fake Nagoya, and I just thought I'd throw that in there. It has no importance or bearing on the story at all, but maybe it paints a picture who Stan is. Uh, Stan uh, likes to save a buck, and we all do, and there's nothing wrong with being frugal. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get a good deal, but uh, I think the moral of the story is, is that sometimes you can be penny wise and pound foolish, meaning that you might spend a lot of money on one type of uh, gear, one piece of equipment, and not money on another one and that could cause you some problems and maybe you should think about spending less on one piece of equipment a little bit more on another and really balance your budget out and uh, that way you get the best experience that you want. Uh, Stan is ready to step up his game so uh, he, he, he wants to go out he wants to spend some money and he wants to get himself a, a, a shack going and the, the last thing is Stan's emotional. Uh, many of us are emotional and we get uh, very attached to certain ideas and certain concepts. So Stan sets up his rig and uh, actually I'll tell you what, let me, uh, let me hide myself here so you can see the, the whole thing in all of its glory. So uh, Stan got an Icon 5100, I believe is the rig. Um, he's got his SWR and power meter and then he has uh, his 100 feet of RG58 coaxial cable. And uh, this is a rendition of the Chicom Laser Beam 2. I forgot to put the 2 on there. But uh, in any event, it is an impressive antenna. Um, let's just keep going here and we'll talk about the things that happened with Stan. So Stan and I have a little bit of a discussion and I explained to him that the length of the cable, he wanted to put his antenna out at the end of the yard on the fence and um, the type of cable was going to cause him issues and it, it, it wasn't what he expected. And uh, Stan got upset, he was mad and he, he, he's like, bro, it's one to one, it's one to one. And this is where the uh, the title of the video comes in. Um, the meter don't lie. That's what he said. The meter don't lie, bro. And um, he had a one-to-one -one ratio on his meter. And uh, what I tried to explain to him is that he was going to suffer from line loss because of his coaxial cable. And uh, 100 feet of RG58 loses a little over 6 dB um, on the two-meter band. And um, what six meter, uh, 6 dB means is half of half. So um, you go 3 dB to double your power or down 3 dB to reduce your power by one half. Uh, an additional 3, B, 3 dB taking you to 6, um, that's half of half or 75% power loss. Um, so let me just go down here and we're going to take a quick look at this coaxial cable chart. Now I get that I'm blocking some of it so you're just going to have to calm down about that. But um, <clears throat> the first row uh, is RG58, and you can see on here at the uh, 1.44, I'm sorry, 144 megahertz, um, 6.2 is, uh, is the loss that would incur over 100 feet of that cable. Um, when I told Stan this, he started to a little bit understand, and uh, he started to accept what uh, his fate was going to be. So we had to do the math. Um, we, we, we broke out a calculator and, uh, and we talked about it. And so um, our line loss and power, 6 dB is 75%. We kind of covered that on the last slide. So what we did is we took 50 watts and then we subtracted uh, 50 watts times 75% and that will give us our potential output. So when you do this, Stan's potential output at his antenna has now become 12.5 watts. Um, that's a big difference from the 50 watts that he was expecting because like again when I talked to him Stan's like bro 50 watts I got my high gain Chicom laser beam 2 antenna 1 to 1 SWR and um, you know I'm telling Stan uh, that that's not true um, so anyhow taking a look at this uh, there was a 2 to 1 SWR at the antenna 
And when we do some more math, what we find out is, is that with the two to one SWR, and there's a chart in the top, and I've got some links below that kind of explain all this, so you can check those out. Um, you're looking at about 11% of your power uh, being reflected back on your coaxial to cable, where it bounces back and forth. And uh, we're not going to talk about that dynamic. Uh, it's not necessary to kind of explain uh, the tale of woe that uh, that we're going through right here. But when you take that 11% uh, out, so you got your 12.5 watts, uh, you subtract 1.375 watts, which is 11%. And now uh, Stan is uh, putting out, when he transmits, about 11.125 watts, give or take. So he goes from 50 watts to 11 watts. Um, and that's a bitter pill to swallow, and Stan was obviously upset about it. Uh, he kept going back to, but the SWR is like one to one. Why? Why is that the case? So let's take a look at that. Um, with 12.5 watts going out, and then you have the 1.35 uh, watts coming back. That's what's being reflected back down your coaxial cable. That 1.375 watts is now subject to the same 6 dB loss uh, that that you would get when it goes back down that 100 feet of coaxial cable. And uh, when it comes back to the meter, it's almost nothing. It's like 0.3 of a watt or something like that. And then when you look at the um, the, the, the 50 out, uh, and then you look at the one, uh, 0.3 coming back in, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, and that's what he's got at the meter. So even though his meter looked good, um, it didn't tell the whole story of what was going on with his ham shack. So, you know, during the course of the story, our, our friend Stan, he went through the stages of grief. He, he was angry at first, uh, he, he wanted to argue about it, then he was sad, and then he accepted it. And Stan had to make some choices. He had to decide on what he was going to do. And uh, I think what Stan did is he moved the antenna a little bit closer to the house, and uh, he bought some, uh, some better coax cable with less loss. So by lengthening the run and by getting less loss cable, he was able to get more of his signal out. And then Stan, he was eventually happy. So... What I want to remind everybody is it's kind of a funny story to talk about Stan and, and what he went through, but um, we're all Stan, right? We all get excited. Uh, we all like to save a buck. Um, what you need to do, and, and what I do, is get opinions. Um, it's best to surround yourself with a community of hams that you can talk to. They can be online. They can be at a club in person. They could be your neighbors, your buddies, whatever, off of a form. But uh, you just want to talk about things, and you want to understand what works well for some people and what doesn't work well for other people. Um, and that really helped you formulate your idea and your plans for building out a ham shack. Um, try to be respectful. We're all always learning. Um, I've got plenty of stories about me that are just like Stan's story. Um, and I'm sure you folks do as well. Anyhow, that's going to take us to the end of the video. I do appreciate everybody watching. I hope you liked it. And uh, stay tuned for another episode of Lid Tips. Thanks, everybody.